Well, happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to the Morning Mix. Hey there. Hi. I almost said Monday. <laughs> and I always say we never go backwards, we only go forwards. It is the second Monday. You know, Tuesday gets the yeah. worst rap on the days of the week, I think. Because it still feels like Monday sometimes. Yeah, pretty much. But when you realize it's not Monday and it's actually Tuesday, then you're excited. Then you're, exactly. <gasps> then, oh, 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 we're that much closer. So, <laughs> hey there, everyone. You're that Hopefully much closer your to the weekend, everybody. Morning okay. is off to a decent start. Are you doing okay? Doing good. In your nice jacket. Doing good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Yeah, I like that jacket. Uh, by the way, I'm, we, we missed this yesterday. Uh, happy. Uh, late Daughter's Day. Daughter's Day was yesterday. National Daughter's Day. Yes. I know it was Daughter's Day because I woke up to a nice post from my mom this morning. I so knew Julia I think was she do I think she made a post when I was asleep because you know I go to sleep <laughs> early. I should go to sleep earlier than what I do. Yes. But yeah, I woke up and was like, oh, that's so cute. Because yeah. my mom's never really on Facebook posting a lot of things. So the fact that she said. Happy National Daughters Day to me. That made my day. And then I started scrolling and I saw a lot of other oh people doing the God. same thing. My Facebook so, was inundated with all those. Exactly. So if you're a daughter out there, yes. hey, happy National Daughters Day. Keep doing what you're doing. <clears throat> I now know every single daughter of every single person I know that has a daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to <Facebook. laughs> Because of yesterday. Uh, so happy Daughters Day to my daughter, Allie. We don't get along as well as we would like, but that's just because we're too much like each other. Oh. Don't, don't. Tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, not watching. Neither of us would admit that. Yeah. So happy Daughter's Day. Oh, I like that. I would late, say, you know late. what? I would say I'm a perfect uh, mixture between the two. My parents. I can't say I'm like. You know what? I've met your like parents. And I actually, like I agree with you. I think you actually are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how that works sometimes. Uh, your brother, I've only met. I think. I think I've met once. One time. One yep. time. One time. Yeah, my brother's a hardworking man now. I hate to say that. You know, when you have younger siblings, you're like, you know, they're your babies. There's baby brother, baby <laughs> sister, little brother, little sister. Well, yeah, but you dressed him as a baby, and he was sitting there at the tea parties when you were a kid. <laughs> we already know about that. <laughs> yeah, well, Look now he graduated, and now he's working, okay. and so it's kind of crazy to see that. But, anyways. <laughs> If you're joining our show, today's a busy day. And I know we say that every day, but we have a lot of guests. We actually have an in-studio audience, we as we like to say. three over there right now. <laughs> Hi. So we'll tell, we'll tell you about that in just a bit. But events happening this weekend. We have a walk mm -hmm. um, next month. We have a production we want to tell you about. That's yes. happening at the Imperial. I'm really interested to s learn more about this. Uh, it seems like it's going to be juicy. <laughs> you know? Like someone did something, and we're trying to figure out what's happening. So I I'm excited to learn about that. Okay. See, all the gossip's here. Yeah, Don't so keep watching. So keep watching Morning yeah. Mix, right? <laughs> exactly. Let's go ahead and get on into it here. Uh, oh, who didn't play with these? Unless you had Lincoln Logs, you had Legos, right? Everybody had Legos. Definitely. You guys had Legos. Definitely. They're all yeah. naughty. Not, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. So Lego has ditched its plan to make bricks from uh, the recycled plastic bottles. You remember a couple of years ago, they said they were gonna just do this. They were just gonna make recycled Legos. Uh, the toy maker made the decision after three years of testing the more climate friendly recycled material. Lego said it found that the manufacturing process of the alternative material would actually cause more planet heating pollution than the current production of the oil-based uh, oil bricks. Mm, okay, so it's not a better option. The company mm. said they also found that the recycled plastic wasn't as durable and safe, and bricks didn't stick together as well or pull apart as easily. <laughs> well, that's important. Yeah, Lego has pledged to use only sustainable materials in its products. By 2032, the toy maker said it remains fully committed to that goal. Well, at least this wasn't something where, you know, they had this idea and they just jumped on it, and once they did it, then they were like, this is bad. At least they did their research and their studies ahead of time and just decided that that's not the way to go. I don't want to sound cliche, but short of having your child in the hospital, there is no worse pain than a parent stepping on a ah! brick at two in the morning. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Ste stepping on any toy, really. Mm -mm, no. Nope. Even Barbie uh, dolls and stuff. I never sounded more like a, a, a woman screaming. <laughs> <laughs> then when you stepped my on. voice just went. Oh yeah. my goodness. Well, I don't even think I could do that again. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't even know. Well, try stepping on a scorpion. Okay. Okay. I think that means you always got to one up. Me? I'm just saying that was that was one of the worst pains. I thought I was going to die. I actually asked my parents when I stepped on it. I was like, am I going to die? I didn't know at the time. But uh, the well, point. I mean, that was valid. It was a scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> I think I hurt the scorpion more than it hurt me, though, because it was uh, still there. I would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Moving on here. This is actually something cool for everybody, especially with all the strikes that we're right. talking about uh, with TV and writing uh, a reboot 
of the U.S. version of the show The Office could be in the works, mm. according to Puck News. Uh, it's unclear if the standouts like Steve Carell, John Krasinski, Jenna Fisher, Mindy Kaling, Rain Wilson would actually be in the reboot. Uh, writers Matthew Bellani and Jonathan Handel cover Hollywood extensively uh, from Puck, and that's where they got this uh, exclusive. Okay, so they say original showrunner Greg Daniels is set to return. So a Collider article from last year quotes Daniels saying he's not sure about bringing back the same characters. Rather, he thinks a new version of The Office should be a part of the original program's universe. That's where you go wrong with reboots. Should never be a reboot if you're not bringing back original characters. Just my opinion. Now, I would imagine uh, Rain Wilson would probably be up for it. Steve Carell, John Krasinski, uh, Jenna Fisher, I mean, they've all moved on to like movies. True. So but they want to come back and do the, If they did like a limited series, I'd be absolutely happy for that. You remember when they did that with uh, Will and Grace? They brought it back just for a short time, but everybody got back together and it was, it was like the band got back together. No? But did you like it? <laughs> no. See, I'm really I didn't weird like about it. As mu I didn't like it as much. That's the hard as the thing. That's it's the thing. It's really That's hard when it comes to reboots, and we can talk about Fuller House, too. I watched an episode yeah. and stopped. It's yeah. And they actually brought back the original cast, to say the least, there. So Frasier. I don't know. That's on Paramount+. Plus. I've got such big hopes for this. I have... Uh, mm -hmm. Do me right. Do me yeah. right. I guess it's just hit or miss, right? And then it you is. have Bel Air, is. which is. is completely reboot of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That one's on Peacock. Total new cast, of course. That one actually is not too bad, but you can't go in with high hopes and compare. Just don't compare. Now, don't Fresh, compare. yeah, but Fresh Prince was like a complete different thing. It was like a whole different monster altogether, you know? It wasn't as comedic. It was more of a drama, and it was, you know. But if you're going to do something, can you reboot Friends or Seinfeld? I don't know. That's our question to you, by the way, actually. Uh, our question to, for you today is, what TV show would you like to see be rebooted? Now, we've already got a couple. Mm. Uh, like, somebody wants to have ALF. You remember ALF? Rebooted. Mm. No? I'm not familiar. You're not familiar with ALF? I don't think so. We've got to talk after the show. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. We'll talk about that. Anyway, give us your answers, and uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. All right, coming up, the annual Walk to End Alzheimer's is this Saturday at Evanstown Center Park. We're talking with one of the organizers and a family being directly affected by the disorder and what they're doing about it. Plus, the University Lecture Series is kicking off this Thursday in downtown Aiken, a multi-week discussion on numerous topics. When we come back, we'll tell you all about that here on Morning Mix. I was Not, born in the 80s. That's why we 80s, probably don't. I don't really. <laughs> For such a sweet yeah. young thing like you, <laughs> it, you you probably weren't even alive when Alf was on. That's what I was saying. <laughs> if you guys oh. will, uh, hop up, we're gonna take a quick. Oh yeah, sure. Welcome back. Nice thank to you. Have you. I know. Long time no see. Thank you both for coming on sure. the show. It's nice see to have you. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. I was to say quickest photos ever taken, man. A bit wide on the portrait, but all good. All right. Good. Thank you. I brought a prop this time, if that's okay. No, I love Since it. Since we're talking about the flowers.
Sorry, my dress is. Can you give me a mic check? Just say one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Okay. And Susie? One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Yeah. We're going to actually check your mic as well. All right, one, two, one, two. Hey, thanks for watching Morning Mix. Okay, it's time to grab those walking shoes. The annual walk to in Alzheimer's is coming up at the end of this month at Evanstown Center Park. And this year, it's looking to be bigger than ever That's this right. Saturday. Kelly Brookins is a development manager with Alzheimer's Association Georgia Chapter. She joins us back in the mix studio today along with Susie and Rick Tate, also here with us. Uh, good morning, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Um, Kelly, let's, uh, before we get into the walk, which is going to be this Saturday, let's talk a little bit about what Alzheimer's is and what your organization does. Absolutely, so um, Alzheimer's is, a lot of people think of it as uh, you, you lose, you're losing your memories, right? We can't, we can't think as well as we do anymore, but there is a difference between just natural aging right. and the progression of Alzheimer's or dementia. Alzheimer's is, um, is a form of dementia. It's under that big umbrella. Um, and at the Alzheimer's Association, we focus on research, advocacy, care and support, and um, awareness. And so we are um, always advocating um, at the state, local, and national level for those living with the disease, as well as the caregivers, as well as research, funding, new medications, because there is no cure. There's 6.5 million people living with the disease, but we don't even really have good treatments until fairly recently. Um, and then also here on the ground in Augusta, we've got five caregiver support groups, which Rick and Susie are part of one really special one that we have, uh, as well as lots of educational programming that we do um, for the public. And speaking of funding and research, a lot of events that you hold, like Saturday morning, exactly. right? The Walk to End Alzheimer's help support this cause and help raise awareness. What can people expect Saturday? So Saturday is going to be fun and also very meaningful. So we'll have lots of resources there uh, for local resources, um, for people that are living with Alzheimer's or dementia. We will also have some food trucks this year. We're going to have a new pet area, so please bring your pet. We'll have a pet costume contest. Um, we are going to have our promise garden, which I think we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, as well as a memory wall and some other fun things um, to do. So we're excited. Uh, you brought up the Promise Garden, and obviously we have flowers on the table here. So let's talk about the different colors that we have, because you've got different colors of the flowers. Yes. So our orange flower um, means that I support a world without Alzheimer's or dementia, so maybe you don't have a direct connection, but you support the cause. Our yellow flower is that you are a caregiver or supporting someone currently living with a disease or dementia. Blue is I am currently living with Alzheimer's or dementia. And purple is that I've lost someone to the disease. So when you come um, to our event, you will pick up a flower that represents you. And then during our Promise Garden ceremony, we'll have representatives of each of these flowers come and speak about how the disease has affected them and how the Alzheimer's Association, how they've been involved with the association. 
I love this. It's a nice event, but also you can go and learn a lot, just like we did with Absolutely. the meetings of these flowers. Um, earlier, you mentioned some support groups out there, and Rick and Susie are part of this. Susie, you are Rick's caregiver. How has this organization helped you? This is just knowing that there's other people that is helping, you know, and just meeting people that are like, okay, so you, you're learning something each time you go to a different meeting, and this is a different meeting. This is for early onset, not for someone who's already had it for a while. Right. And uh, Rick, you're, you two are married. Uh, she's your caregiver. She's your wife. Uh, you're both with this early uh, support group. What was that first meeting like coming in? Frightening. Very frightening. Right. I have Alzheimer's. And Susie is my caregiver. And to actually experience the disease is very frightening and very frustrating. And to know that there's other people out there that are going through it, mm -hmm. to know that you're not alone, it's a big deal. And uh, we're going to be sharing the stage with you guys on Saturday morning. Very happy to say that. Yay. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking forward to it. And Rick, how has this interaction with others helped you? Like I said, it's, it's nice to know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's the most frustrating, insidious disease you can imagine because everything is taken away. And I'm sorry, I get a little emotional. No. It's okay. You lose your memory. You lose your family. You lose everything that you are. And it's just horrible. Mm -hmm. But that's where these support groups Absolutely. come in handy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely because you know there, there are more people like you being affected. That's the big thing, you know. You're not stuck in a home somewhere going, I'm drooling in the corner, you know, because I don't know what's going on. There's people that are like you. There's people that help you. There's people that help your caregivers. Mm -hmm. And the more people that know about it and support it, the faster we can find a cure for it. Absolutely. There you have it. And Kelly, you've seen the number of people uh, supporting this rise, unfortunately, along with the number of Alzheimer's uh, uh, afflictions happening as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we've, seen a, we've seen a rise. Some of that has to do with better early detection and warning and early diagnosis, which is actually a, a good thing. Um, but um, the support for our cause has grown too, and a lot of that is we're trying to take the stigma away from Alzheimer's and dementia. Before, uh, people would not talk about it. They would put their loved one in a corner and pretend, you know, oh, everything's fine. Right. And now times have changed, and with um, organizations uh, like the Alzheimer's Association, we're really putting it in the forefront um, by using our resources and our programming to say it is okay. Um, there are people just like you, and let, let us help you. Let us help you. And you can help this Saturday at Evanstown Center Park. That event is happening at 8 in the morning. So make sure you come and uh, raise awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. Everybody, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. And thanks for sharing your story. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks. My pleasure. All right, let's check in right now. First alert meteorologist, Mikhail Hanna-Harding. How are we looking out there today, buddy? Uh, we are not looking too bad. It's definitely a cloudy year start for some. Others seeing a good bit of sunshine, but we are expecting clouds to take over as we head later into the day. We're also going to have to watch out for a few isolated showers. Uh, we're going to have some light issues. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Well, we'll give Mikhail just a second over here. And again, this is just live TV, you guys. You know, we have uh, mic issues all the time over there. So, Mikhail, just get your mic situated and we'll come back to you in just a minute while we get ready for our next guest. <laughs> oh, and there he is. Voila. Still getting it together here. But uh, as they said, the beauty of uh, live television here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to just do the weather now, but uh, we are looking out for a few isolated showers the next few days and also looking at cooler highs in store. Uh, as far as looking at down from our uh, dam cam here down the river towards Augusta, we are looking at some uh, nice skies out there, a few clouds, but really not much here around Lake uh, Thurman there around Clarks Hill Lake. And we're also looking at uh, just a front hanging out and we're going to see a backdoor cold front swinging through for today. That's going to give us a chance for some rainfall as we head later into the afternoon. But temperatures right now are in the upper 60s, closer to 70 for a lot of us.
Dallas. And then as we look for highs today, still able to get towards those 80s out there, but it will be a slightly cooler than what it was yesterday. About a 20% chance for some of those afternoon and evening showers uh, rolling through for us. As we head through tonight, we'll still have the chance for a few raindrops out there. So having the rain gear with you just in case you have any outdoor plans for this evening, a pretty good idea. But uh, as far as how things could play out for today, again, we're expecting cloud cover just to become a little bit more widespread throughout our afternoon and also tracking that chance for a few isolated showers out there. So having the rain gear once again, not a bad idea. Right, it. Miguel, thanks a lot. No problem. All right, this Thursday kicks off the University Lecture Series in downtown Aiken, a multi-week series of various topics and discussions sponsored by the USC Aiken College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Dr. Forrest Anderson is the dean of that school, and he joins us this morning in the mixed studios. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks, Good Cliff morning. and Zania, for having me. I'm excited Absolutely. to be here. Absolutely. Alma mater. Good <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> this is this is an interesting take on sharing information to the public. How, how did this come about? Absolutely. We have some phenomenal professors and uh, the, at the University of South Carolina. And the great thing about our professors is they're going deep into their fields. They're doing research and they're writing and publishing. Yet at the University of South Carolina, Aiken, as you know, is an mm -hmm. alumni. It's a teaching institution. So these professors are delivering great lectures to their classrooms. And I think all of our professors have probably a half dozen excellent lectures in their best in their back pocket uh, where they wow the class every time they pull them out right so we started thinking as a college well how can we bring that to the community and so that's what we're up to we're going to do our, our best lectures in downtown Aiken right at our uh, downtown Aiken location and they're going to give their best lecture uh, get uh, the community involved in good discussions get people engaged and uh, best of all you don't have to do homework you just show up and have fun <laughs> I oh, didn't you, even think about that. You had me at no homework. All right, cool. <laughs> no, that's really neat. And speaking of the lectures, it kicks off this Thursday. Okay, sure so does. one of your peers, Professor Matthew Thornburg, will actually be conducting the lecture on Thursday on the what and why of the straight ticket voting option. Absolutely. What will that entail? So South Carolina is one of six states in the country that has a straight ticket ballot. And so he's going to talk about people taking that option and what it means for our local and state elections, uh, as well as our national elections. And uh, we said earlier at the beginning of this, uh, the subjects and the topics will be wide and wide varied. Uh, and this is going through uh, December, I believe. Through December. What are the topics that are going to be uh, discussed? Oh, well, October, we're going to get spooky with you. Uh, we're going to talk <laughs> about uh, one of our professors is going to talk about the television show Black Mirror on Netflix, uh, which is about technology and human culture. And what's so scary about that show is it's only a degree or two separate from the world that we're living in. Right. Uh, so uh, he's going to talk about do we need to fear this future? Uh, we're going to follow that up with uh, uh, hauntings and hauntologies, where we're going to hear some ghost tales from Charles Dickens. And then we're going to get a little bit lighter with you. Uh, we're going to bring a visiting writer named Alan Barreca, uh, who is going to read some poetry. Some of our students from the Broken Ink Literary Magazine are going to read some of their poetry, too. And then if you're a member of the community and you want to read your poetry in front of an award-winning writer, Alan Barreca will be there, and you can read it, and we can hear it. Whoa. It's going to be pretty exciting. And then we're going to roll into the holiday season. We're going to bring out a spinning wheel and show you how people uh, used to spin cotton into thread. And then we're going to wrap that up with some uh, get you ready for the holidays with our choirs. We'll be singing some uh, holiday music at, to end the series. All right, I like right. it. These are really some neat topics, and you can tell that you all really thought through what you want to give to the, the community. Uh, what are you hoping that people who attend take away from this lecture series? Absolutely. So when I was in school, my favorite classes were my English classes, my history courses, my political science courses. Uh, I got excited about them. And I want people in the community to get excited about what we're doing at USC Aiken. I want them to get a view into what's happening into the classroom and just have fun, uh, engage in a good conversation before they go uh, have a good lunch in downtown Aiken. And now this is a lecture series. However, there is going to be a question answer after effect. Absolutely. So the best teaching is not just people talking to you. Right. So uh, be ready to uh, engage in conversation. Uh, do your best to answer some questions. Like I said, no homework, no one's judging. You're not getting graded, uh, but it'll be a good conversation all around. It's the best college class I never took. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> and let's just go over the details for people that want to attend. We know it kicks off Thursday. Kicks off this Thursday. So it'll be about every other Thursday at 11 a.m. at our downtown location, which is 141 Newberry Street, uh, right at the end of the alley. Okay, check it out. If you're uh, if you know if you know downtown Aiken, you know where the alley is. You know where they are going to be. That's right. Okay. We'll be there. All right. Appreciate Sounds it. Thanks for joining us. Thank Thanks. you all so much. Appreciate it. Okay, coming up, we're not done talking just yet. A production is gearing up to hit the Imperial Theater next month. We're going to hear about the neighbors next door and what to expect here on Morning Mix.
Yes. Okay. Okay. Can Shova, can you do a mic check? One, two, one. Check two. one, check two, check three, check one, check one. Mm -hmm. Check one, two, one, two. Terrell? Yes. Okay. I had a teacher who was terrible. Thanks for watching Morning Mix. Two families live busy, hectic lives and have no idea what's going on right next door to them. But one situation can shake up the whole neighborhood. You never know when you will need your neighbor. That's just a little of what you can expect if you head out to see the Ready or Not production of The Neighbors Next Door. You can check it out at the Imperial Theater October 14th at 7 o'clock. And we have playwright Shova Williams and creative and media director as well as cast member Terrell Presley in with us this morning to give us all the deets. Good morning, guys. Thanks. Good morning. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Nice Thanks to have you on the show. I was just telling them before, when I read what this was about, it really just sparked my curiosity because it leaves you hanging, but that's what you want because you right. want people to come out and see mm -hmm. this. So, Shoba, before we get into the play, tell us a little bit about Ready or Not Productions. Um, Ready or Not Productions was founded 10 years ago. We actually set a braiding this year, 10 years. And um, it was an accident in North Augusta, and um, two people died. And at that moment, I didn't know... I said to myself, I wonder if they went to heaven or hell. And um, so I said I wanted to create something that would give people an opportunity to get to know God if they just didn't go to church or they didn't know God or Jesus. So that was my um, platform to start writing plays. So that's how I started writing plays. And it's honestly, it's a great way to actually broach that subject and, and present it to other people as well. Uh, October 14th, The Neighbors Next Door. You'll never look at your neighbors again the same way. <laughs> uh, that's going to premiere at the Imperial. What can people expect? Um, they can expect drama, um, comedy. We have also um, good singing, um, some pretty good songs. Terrell is one of the castmates. Yeah. Okay, it sounds like a lot's happening in Terrell. You play Omar. Tell yes. us about your character. Okay, so Omar, he's a very hardworking man but there is chaos at home. And he's spending most of his time trying to like regain control of his home atmosphere um, without, you know, being too much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they live in a close, in close proximity to neighbors. So it's kind of trying to, trying to stay, uh, stay within their walls and not let what's happening with inside of their home leak out to neighbors. Um, and without telling too much, because I want everybody to come see it. I know, what's happening inside of the home already? What's happening inside of the home? No secrets, no secrets. <laughs> Just know that the hectic lives that they live, one of the families could actually miss a blessing. Okay, okay. all right. And I, I, dun, dun, dun. I don't want to let this like bleed into the next question, though, but where did the idea to create and write this show come from? Well, you know, we was, um, during the pandemic, we kind of lost touch with being neighborly. Mm -hmm. So once we finally got back out and doing things, that connection still was gone. So I just went in and just started writing and hoping that maybe we could start being more neighborly to the neighbors that we live next door to or the people we stand next to in the line or um, your neighbors at work or church. Just hoping that it'll start, you know, getting that feel back of how God intended us to be, which is neighborly. Yeah. Spreading more kindness and love and uh, because we kind of lost a little bit of that. Um, even even before the pandemic, really, like it's not like it used to be when we were kids and we'd have to go next door to get sugar or eggs or, you know, stuff Nobody like that. Nobody ever does the block parties anymore. Yeah. Right. You know, right. That's right. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That is true. And Terrell, coming back to you, what's it like being a part of this production? What's been your favorite part? And maybe what's been the hardest part? Because I'm sure it's not always easy. Um, actually, the hardest part for me is being the media and creative director. <laughs> <laughs> um, the acting part is kind of is kind of easy, um, especially with um, our director, Stuart Brooks. Um, he kind of really pulls it out of everybody um, and, and makes us better. But the, the media and the creative design is me having to take her vision and then do the visuals for it and make everything look good. The flyers, the, the promotional stuff, the marketing. Um, and so that's the actual hard part of, of, of doing it. 
So uh, not putting you on the spot, Shova, but has he done a good job? Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> he's actually been in every production we've had, and this oh. is our 11th production. So wow. he's been in 11, and he's done wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Marks, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. A man with multiple hats, though, right. is what it sounds like. Let's go over the details, Shova, for people that want to come watch, where, when, and for more information, where can they get those tickets? Okay, The Neighbors Next Door, Saturday, October the 14th, at the Imperia Theater. You can get your tickets at the box office at Imperia Theater, or you can go on online at theimperiotheater.com. All right, check that out. The Neighbors Next Door, October 14th. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. Break Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up, get ready to swim at the Croc Center this weekend. The Augusta Junior Players will take you to the deep ocean, and we'll tell you all about this amazing show next here on Morning Mix. Okay, so mic check. Christina, do you mind giving us a mic check? Yep. Just a one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Okay. Azaria, can you do uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Okay, everyone's good? All right. Everyone's good. All right. And you can take any photos as long as you're behind these three cameras.
Welcome back to Morning Mix. The Augusta Junior Players gearing up for an amazing weekend. Christina DiCarlo, Mia Price, and Azaria Seeley are joining us to talk about Finding Nemo Jr., which is going to premiere this weekend. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having us. Uh, it, you guys are out of school. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. They're like, yes, I wanted to be here because of that. <laughs> so what can people expect to see this weekend at the Croc Center? They can expect nonstop fun, Finding Nemo Jr. It's based off the movie Finding Nemo, and it's also specifically created for young people to perform. So we have a group of 27, um, ages 8 through 14. We have singing, we have dancing, trampolines, beach balls, bubbles, so a ton of under the sea fun. Beach balls and bubbles. Yeah, that's no, all you need. Th that's just fun. That's what Finding Nemo is. Mia, so Nemo. That's who you're playing. It's a big role. What are you looking forward to? What are you excited about? Um, I'm really excited about like all the costumes. All the costumes are really pretty and fun. And it's just a really fun show. And I'm really excited about hanging out with all my friends and everything. All right. And uh, Zaria, speaking of friends, you mm -hmm. played Dory. Oh, yeah. Just keep <laughs> swimming. Uh, <laughs> what's been the most challenging thing besides that line? Because that, that obviously keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. <laughs> um, I, I'd say the most challenging thing is just, I guess, long rehearsals because they really tire me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the players have been known for long rehearsals. I know that yeah. for a fact. Yes, <laughs> yes. we do. And we're always saying that you guys are so busy with multiple shows. There's one going on right now, not just Finding Nemo Jr., but there's also another one coming up, so it's just, it never stops. Yes. Uh, Mia, what's your favorite part about being a part of this show? My favorite part is Either all my friends that I love hanging out with and um, all the cast and crew and probably like all the singing. I love singing and the dances are really fun. Okay, I like it. I like it too. Yes, I like yes. it too. And again, that's going to be happening uh, again on the, this weekend as well. <gasps> what, as far as the rehearsals, and like you said, there's a lot of rehearsals, mm -hmm. but and, and we're actually seeing a little bit of the uh, video there for the rehearsals as well. But you said it's a cast of 27. It is a cast of 27, It's yes. a lot of moving parts here for this show. It is a lot of moving parts, but a lot of fun moving parts. Um, and what's so impressive about these young students is that the majority of them play more than one character. So about, I would say, 85% of the cast plays about four different characters throughout the show. So at rehearsal, they're playing a moonfish, they're playing a turtle, they're playing a seagull, so they really are working so hard and using every minute of that rehearsal time we have. And we were just saying you guys are so busy and you're always looking to cast other interested um, kids out there. Yes. Talk to us about that in the process. If someone is interested in being a part of the Augusta Junior Players. Of course. The first thing I would say is follow us on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. You can also visit our website, AugustaPlayers.org, and there is a whole page for the Augusta Junior Players. Actually coming up October 15th, the weekend of October 15th, we have auditions for School of Rock which is a show for the Augusta players, but there are a lot of young children roles in that. So if you're interested in auditioning, if you play an instrument, come on out and look at the auditions for School of Rock. All right, be sure to check that out and be sure to check out this week. And again, Augusta Junior Players, Finding Nemo. Where can people go to get tickets and more info? They can go to augustaplayers.org. All right, and you see that on the screen there. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you Thank for you. having us. We appreciate it. All right, sending things on over. Back to you, Mikhail. Mikhail, <laughs> do you yep. have your mic on? Mic check, mic check. Sound like it. <laughs> okay. Sound like it. Let's try this again. Take two. Uh, we are looking uh, down the Savannah River towards Augusta from the Thurman Dam here. A beautiful look this morning. Definitely a good bit of sunshine out there right now. 69 degrees, the current temperature, and those winds are calm. Uh, we are expecting, though, some clouds to build in as we continue to see this cold front working through the area. So you can see it kind of dropping south and also expecting a backdoor cold front to swing in from the north and east. So cloud cover is on the way for today uh, and could give way to maybe a few isolated showers as well as we head later into your day. Current conditions around the southeast, we find temperatures in the 60s and 70s from South Carolina all the way back towards Alabama. Also seeing a mixture of clouds and sun for some here in Augusta and also up around Myrtle Beach, some of the more sunnier spots at this time. As we look at current temperatures across the area, we see those in the low 70s now for a lot of locations in Crawfordville. I think your sensor may be overdoing it just a bit. Don't think you're quite towards the upper 70s yet, but maybe. Uh, but as far as how it feels, we're going from those 60s now to 70s and 80s approaching midday. As we continue towards your afternoon, we'll find those 
those temperatures topping off in those low to mid 80s for today with more cloud cover around and also that chance for an isolated shower. So here's a look at how things could play out as we head towards midday. We just continue to see cloud cover building across the area and then we'll see that chance for it. Maybe an isolated pop up shower or a downpour across the CSRA moving past about 2 3 p.m. and then lasting through portions of tonight. So uh, it would be a safe bet to have the rain gear with you if you have any outdoor plans pretty much moving into this afternoon all the way through tonight. But that rain chance is isolated and I don't think everyone will see rainfall today. Did you just call out Crawfordville? Uh, you just called I out did. Crawfordville. Did I say Crawfordville? Yeah, I think I did. The people of Crawfordville, we apologize. <laughs> Hell just called you out. It was their sensor though, the temperature sensor. It'd be, it, I don't know what's, what's, what's going on with that sensor. Not the people there. though. Again, live TV. My <laughs> Crawfordville, everything just happens really weird. So, yeah, all right. Mikhail, all. we appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to a little bit of rain, so I hope those chances um, actually stick. Actually stick, because yeah. I know it can be a little dicey sometimes. Some of us oh, may yes. see it, some of us won't, so stay tuned. You've been warned. Mow your yards. <laughs> now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Mikhail. No problem. All right. Morning mix. There's more, okay? Including the latest entertainment news. Be. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back <laughs> after a quick break. Welcome back to Morning Mix. A new project for Steven Spielberg and a popular TV show returns this week. Astrid Martinez has your eye on entertainment. And now we'll have time to One of TV's most iconic reality series is back on CBS this Wednesday. Survivor returns for its 45th edition with host Jeff Probst. We have a lot of very smart players this season and they're smart storytellers. And now we'll have time to really get inside their story, where they're from, what they believe, how they approach the game. For the first time in 23 years, episodes will be 90 minutes long, but the grand prize stays the same, $1 million for one survivor. 
From the beginning of life to today. Two Hollywood heavyweights are joining forces for a new nature documentary series. This is the story of the great battles of survival. Steven Spielberg is the executive producer and Morgan Freeman narrates life on our planet. The eight episode series uses high tech special effects to bring long extinct prehistoric creatures back to life. It begins streaming October 25th on Netflix. And Paw Patrol, the mighty movie, doesn't hit U.S. theaters until Friday, but it's already helping to break records, thanks to 219 dogs in Los Angeles over the weekend. The pups set a Guinness World Record for most dogs attending a film screening. Paramount Pictures is expecting even bigger crowds when humans get their chance to see the new film later this week. That's your eye on entertainment. Astrid Martinez, CBS News. Patrol movies gone to okay, I was so going to say Martinez instead of Martinez. I know. That's, that's what threw me off. If <laughs> you know, kind of you know. And if you're in this area, of course, you know. You yeah, know already. <laughs> uh, we were just, well, I was just saying that uh, Morgan Freeman, who better to voice anything? That's all Morgan, I have to say. Morgan Freeman. Just, I don't even know why um, I just tried to do that because I know I never could. <laughs> no, yeah, that's someone. It's just only, only him, only him, right? Well, streaming giant Netflix revolutionized the way we watch television and movies so much so that a lot of us may have forgotten it started out as a mail order DVD rental operation. I know I did not know that at one point. <laughs> that part of the business model largely fell into obscurity years ago and will officially end in less than a week. So the company announced the approaching end of DVD rental shipments back in April. That's right. Netflix uh, CEO, CEO Ted Sarandis wrote on the company's website, quote, after an, an incredible 25 year run, we've decided to wind down DVD.com later this year. The first DVD that Netflix ever mailed out, it was Beetlejuice. <laughs> on March 10th of 1998. Company says in the following years, it had 40 million unique subscribers mailed out upwards of 5 billion DVDs. So the uh, DVD service will end on Friday. Netflix will send some subscribers 10 surprise DVDs in that final shipment. Uh, I would love to know what those 10 DVDs are. I mean, I still have a DVD player, but Me too. Uh, let's be honest. When was the last time you used your DVD player? Not recently, but um, within the last year, for sure. I know I'm, I watched something. At least two years since I've used the DVD player. Mm, I might, okay. I, I, since we've like transferred some things from VHS mm -hmm. to, to DVD, you might go back and look at that when the family gets together, mm. but I haven't used the DVD. Yeah, DVDs. you know, it's probably been a little longer for me now that I think about it, but I did Redbox for the longest time. Right. Um, and I know I've used Redbox in the last maybe two years or something, so I'm going to put it at two years. But I still will keep that Blu-ray. I will still listen players. to CDs, though, so... And my vinyl. Got to have my vinyl. Okay. An amazing journey <laughs> to the bottom of the ocean revealed new insights on the final moments of three different doomed ships in one of World War II's biggest battles. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Watch explorers get an up-close look at not one, but three sunken World War II aircraft carriers in stunning detail. The expedition, led by the Ocean Exploration Trust, offered an unprecedented examination of the carriers lost in the massive Battle of Midway in 1942. Researchers say they were able to survey one Japanese carrier, the Akagi, for the very first time since it went down. The underwater mission was live-streamed to the public and benefited from insights from more than 100 participating experts worldwide. The study could offer new details about the vessel's final moments in the pivotal battle. And now to a surprise revealed not by going down in the water, but by the water going down. Tower Rock, a formation in the Mississippi River, normally reachable only by boat, is now accessible by foot due to severe drought levels. The plummeting water line has made this the second year in a row that local looky-loos and intrepid trekkers can make this rare rock walk without getting their feet wet. Finally, take a look at what's believed to be the oldest fish in an aquarium anywhere in the world. That's according to the California Academy of Sciences, which says this Australian lungfish was brought to Steinhardt Aquarium in San Francisco in 1938 and has outlived all other fish brought there before World War II. Appropriately named Methuselah after an infamously old biblical figure, the fish is estimated to be around 92 years old and is described by aquarium officials as charming. For Take a Look at This... I'm Jeremy Roth.
That's a charming fish. That's an old fish. <laughs> That's a pet. I mean, did you see that they're just petting him and literally feeding the fish? Yeah, yeah. After 92 years, you got to kind of get used to it. I guess, yeah. <laughs> and we were just talking about this because I think it is neat about the water levels, you know, going down True. at certain places. I always know every time I would cross over in Oklahoma, you know, into Texas, there's the Red River, right? And so uh, sometimes that would happen. It would be very dry and then times it would be full. So yeah. it's always neat to see how that happens. You know what? You, you know when it hasn't rained a lot. <laughs> Hopefully we, we get a little bit of rain coming up in the next places. few days. All right, stick around because we're not done yet. We're going to answer. Well, we're going to check basically your answers to our social question. Plus, we might, we might I have some sure. words of inspiration to get your day started. That's right. I haven't thought of anything. You have your answer? Give me, give me, okay. give me this commercial break and we'll be right. right back. All right, thanks to all our guests here today on Morning Mix. Before we go, let's check out your answers to our social question this morning. Uh, so what TV show would you like to see a reboot of? There have been so many already. Uh, Will Rogers, Alf. Again, you and I have to talk about after the show about Alf since well, you don't know this one. Now that I see, uh, does it look yeah, it now? does. Yeah, it yeah, does. I, maybe I just didn't really watch, but I I do remember seeing this. See, I just have to see photos sometimes. Alien life form. But loves again, cats. we talked about this was popular in the '80s, cats so let's eating. put that out there. Okay, okay if that tells you my age. Jay saying facts of life. Ooh, now now that would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, Ivan, Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Nelly saying the Mod Squad, Miami Vice, and uh, I Dream of Jeannie. Now I Dream of Jeannie would be interesting to check out. Uh, a show from my childhood from Kathy and. Jack, Sky King. Okay, All Kimberly right. saying happy days. Also interesting. Uh, Dawn, everybody loves <laughs> Raymond. Yeah, I would love to see Raymond in the later years. Actually, oh, that man. would be cool. Dakota saying welcome back, Carter. Okay, Lucy and Marie, uh, any day now. All right, my mom Julia saying Matlock. <laughs> you can't beat you can't beat Matlock now. Tammy, Family Matters and Scott Seinfeld. <laughs> A lot of people want to see Seinfeld. <laughs> I loved Family Matters. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, now I have to go watch some stuff. Before we go, I want to leave you with this. This says the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. Kobe Bryant said that right. one. Uh, the most important thing we're going to do is we're going to go binge watch some old TV series. Right I think now. so. Yeah, I think, that's I what think we're we need do. to do that this week. Have yourself, yeah, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you Alf finally. Have yourself some great, uh, what is it, Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. See you then.